Lord Father God for this day Lord Father God thank you Jesus for blessing us and keeping us safe Lord Father God I pray Jesus please help us to worship you in spirit and in truth Lord help us to seek your face Jesus and also help us to feel your presence in this place Lord I thank you Jesus in Jesus name I pray amen To break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Power in the name of Jesus, there is power. To break every chain, me rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break. Every chain to break 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 every chain there's an army rising up there's an To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. I And I 
you we glorify you we magnify you lord we worship you lord of father for who you are we thank you lord that you are in perfect control of every situations lord we thank you lord that you never leave us you never forsake us thank you lord you are faithful oh god thank you that you are faithful indeed oh god thank you that you are glorious thank you lord that you are marvelous thank you lord that you are the beginning and the end Thank you Lord you are the first and the last thank you Lord you are the alpha and the omega 
Thank you, Lord. You are the God of all mankind. Thank you, Lord, of Father, who you rule and reign over everything. Thank you, Lord. You are the God of all creation. Thank you, Father. Every knee bow before you and every tongue confess, Lord, that you are the Lord. Thank you, Lord, of Father. Thank you, Lord, that your voices and your Lord, your, your voices are heard, O oh, Father. The trees and the mountains and the valleys, O oh, Father, hear your voice, O oh, God, O oh, Father. Even the deep waters hear your voice, O oh, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you knew us, O oh, God. Thank you, Lord, that you predestined us. Thank you, Lord, that you chose us. Thank you, Lord, O oh, Father, that you made us fruitful. Thank you, Lord, O oh, Father, that you appoint us, O oh God. You appoint us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your great knowledge, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, O oh Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we exalt you. We glorify you. We praise you, Lord, O oh Father. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We exalt you, Lord. There is power in your name, O oh Lord. There is power in your blood, O oh Lord. There is power in your word, O oh Lord, O oh Father. That every chains be broken in the name of Jesus. Every chains be broken in the word of Jesus Christ. Every chains be broken in the blood of Jesus. Just the mention of the name, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all power and praise. Lord, you bring the entire nation, those who are listening to this, those who are watching, they're the families, and the nation of God, whatever the challenges they may go through. But today, O oh Father, this day the Spirit of God deal with them. This day the Spirit of God deal with them. This day the Spirit of God speak to them, empower them, build them, and rise them up, O oh God. Father, as you promised, do not fear, do not be mis dismayed, for I am the Lord your God, I am with you. I will take hold of your right hand and I will sustain you. Do not fear, do not be afraid. Lord, every fear and every insecurity, every uncertainty be removed. For the Lord God Almighty, the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit, Bless your children, remind in them, abide in them, and the entire world of God, wherever there's been a Lord of troubles, all over the world there's been a trouble and pandemic. Oh Lord, I pray the only way is knowing you. The only way is walking in you. The only way is in complete obedience, O oh Father. For you are the creator, we are your creation. We thank you, Father. Bless your children this day and bless us together in your word, O oh God. For we trust in thee that you are in absolute control of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. And as we've been meditating on uh, from John chapter 15 about um, the Lord says, I have, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that you will bear fruit that will last long and I have appointed you. And uh, the last two weeks we have seen that how we can bear good fruit. And last week we saw that the, how the Lord chooses people. And today we are going to see the Lord appoints his people. The Lord appoints his people. Why does the Lord appoint? He says, I have chosen you. I've called it to bear fruit. And next he says, I've appointed you that you will go and bear fruit. Every one of us who are called, who are chosen by the Lord to bear fruit, we have to be very clear in our mind that we have been appointed for a set purpose. Everyone is unique. Either it is me or my family or you or your family, your church, everyone is unique in the sight of God. And God has his purpose 
in every one of our life. That is why he has appointed us. We are going to look at for his purpose. That God, God is not a selfish God. There are our needs. There are our purpose also. There are the purpose of God. But this very life that is in this clay. This entire body is only a clay. Because the once the life goes away. This only goes to dust. And so in this clay. In this in this dust, it is his breath, his life that is in us. And so he is the creator of us. We are only his creation. And so with, when we have this strong in our mind, we will know that God has not only chosen me, God has not only made me to bear good fruit, but he has appointed me. You and me are appointed by the Lord. For his purpose. The kingdom purpose. His kingdom will last forever and ever. His dominion will last forever and ever. Nobody can destroy his dominion. His dominion will never fade away. Heaven and earth will pass away. Will pass away. But his kingdom, his word will never. And so, He has saved you and me. He has transformed you and me. And all for those who have been, those who believe that I am washed in the blood of Jesus. Those who believe that I am purchased with the price of blood of Jesus, that we have a purpose. The first and the primary purpose is that we are a kingdom appointed people. We want to see a few scriptures and uh, with this kind of distress and pain that is the happening in the world. And uh, we want to look at three uh, key important characters from the Bible and how God appointed them and how God transformed the air people and the situations. And uh, as I said, John chapter 15 verse 16 to 18, the scripture is very clear. That I have not chosen, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you to bear good fruit. And I have appointed you to bear fruit that will last long. Okay. And now we have finished the two, but the, now coming to the appointed one. With this, I just want to, there are five questions that you and me can ask. When did God appoint me? How did he appoint us? Why did God appoint us? For what purpose that God appoints us and where did he appoint us to be? In all these things, we'll have this, uh, the answer for that, the five questions, we will see that. Now looking at Job chapter 36, from 1 to 6, let me read Job chapter 36, 1 to 6. Bear with me a little longer, I will show you that there is more to be said in God's behalf. I get my knowledge from afar. I will ascribe justice to my maker. Be assured that my words are not false. One perfect in knowledge is with you. God is mighty but does not despise men. He is mighty and firm in his purpose. He does not keep the wicked alive but gives the afflicted their rights. He does not keep the Wicked alive, but gives the afflicted their rights. You can go on to read, but I'm just want to close with this. And he says, it is the LUC says, I get my knowledge from afar, and I ascribe justice to my maker. Be assured that my words are not false. One perfect in knowledge is with you. The one who is perfect in knowledge. He is with you. Who is that perfect in knowledge? It is a God Almighty. And he says, God is mighty, but does not despise any man. He is mighty and firm in his purpose. He is mighty and firm in his purpose. God has a purpose for you and for me, and he will never despise. When you look at this, one is that's God's knowledge for every man. 
and God knows every man, every man and knowledge of him and the justice of the Lord and the judgment of the Lord. Because he does not keep the wicked alive but gives the afflicted their rights which means that the judgment of the Lord. The fourth thing that you see here that God knows every man. God knows you, God knows me and God knows everyone that is surrounding. And second, the knowledge is his. As this person says to Job, El Elihu says to Job saying that one perfect in knowledge is with you. The one who is perfect in knowledge is with you. The one who is perfect. One perfect in knowledge is with you. For, so it's, it's a confirmation that God has for new us and he has a knowledge about us in every aspect of our life. He has knowledge God as his knowledge about us in every breath of our life, in every area of our life, and every walks of our life. And so Elihu tells Job, saying that God is mighty and he will never despise men. And God is mighty and firm in his purpose. And next, that is his justice. And next, the judgment he talks about that. He will never keep the wicked alive. But he gives the afflicted their rights. For those who are afflicted, for those who are righteous and afflicted, he says, he gives them every rights and the wicked will perish. And so here we see that God has for you Everything God has a knowledge about your life, my life. We cannot say that God does not know about what I'm going through. No, we are going to see down what if God, it is man who look at the outer appearances, but it is God who knows our inner appearances. God does not choose a man with the outer appearances. God does not look a man with the outer appearances or his presentation or his eloquence or vocabulary. No, nothing. But God looks at my heart. God looks at you inside of you. Few scriptures that we are going to see. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says very clearly that before the world began, praise be to the Lord, the God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his children through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Please mark this scripture very clearly. He says that praise be to God the Father and the Lord Jesus who has blessed us with every heavenly realms, with every spiritual blessings in Christ, every spiritual blessings. The moment that we believe and we stand firm and we are convicted and we are very sure, be assured that he has blessed us with every spiritual blessings. The reason is that he has chosen us, he has appointed us when before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. And he predestined us. He predestined us to be his children in Christ for his pleasure and will, for his pleasure and will. He has predestined you and me as his children for his pleasure and will. When? Before the world began. When did the Lord choose you and me? Much before the world began. He predestined, he has appointed you and me that we have to possess the blessings of the spiritual blessings that he has given to us and in that to be used for his will. Okay. When you read 10 and 11, it says to put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment 
to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen and having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Again he says <clears throat> that all things in heaven and earth will be reconciled. In him we are predestined appointed according to his plan and purpose in, to do his will. According to the plan of him who works of, who works of everything in conformity with his purpose and his will. When the people of Israel, simple thing, 40 days of travel from, uh, from the Egypt to uh, Israel or to Canaan land, but it took 40 years. But ultimately, they murmured, they grumbled, they did many things, but ultimately, whatever God wants to fulfill, He will fulfill it. Either it takes four days, it takes four seconds or four minutes or four days or four months or four years or 40 years. But let us be assured that he will fulfill his purpose according to his scripture. Second Timothy 1, 9 and 11, the Bible says very clearly. Second Timothy 9 and 1. Second Timothy chapter 1. 9 to 11, the Bible says very clearly, Who has saved us and called us to your holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given and given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of the world the time, but now it has been revealed through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death, and brought us life and immorality to light through the gospel. And of this I am appointed as a herald and as an apostle and a teacher. Hallelujah. And see here the Paul tells to Timothy very clearly that he has saved us and called us to a holy life not because of anything that we have done. I tell you all of us are imperfect people. All of us have fallen short of His glory. Nobody, does, none of us are worthy to receive this grace of salvation, of holy and blame, to be walked blameless. But here He says, who has saved us and called us and appointed us to a holy life, not because of anything that we have done, but because of His own purpose, for His own purpose that He has called us and saved us. His purpose ought to be fulfilled. Does it mean that he's a, he's a jealous God or is a... Um, no, he is jealous God for us, no doubt. But whatever we need in our life on this earth, he does it. But above all, our priority, our objective for you and me is that we have to turn, we have to place God first in our life. We have to do his will. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. When we seek his kingdom, when we seek his righteousness and then he says all these things will be added to us and he says he has destroyed death and has brought life to us and he destroyed immorality and he brought us to the light through the gospel. We were all dead in sins. We were all in immorality. He saved us and called us and appointed us to fulfill his purpose that the death has no more hold on you and me and immorality will have no hold on you and me. Hallelujah. And what does Hebrews say in Hebrews 3 from uh, when you read 1 and 2 Hebrews 3 1 and 2 the Bible says Therefore, holy brothers, here he says, 
for those who have been appointed they they are called holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling for those who are appointed are called the holy brothers what a privilege it is and not only that they have the they have share in the heavenly calling fix your thoughts on jesus the apostle and the high priest whom we confess he was faithful to the one who appointed him just as moses was faithful in all god's house jesus christ has been found worthy of greater honor than moses just as the builder of the house has a greater honor than the house itself hallelujah now he says it's very clearly that it is jesus christ who has called us into the heavenly calling he is appointed into that and just as moses was faithful in the god's house and here we have two models one is moses another is jesus christ and jesus christ as he the son of god who lived on this earth he proved and he manifested demonstrated that he was faithful in what god has purpose to send him down he finished it it is because of his life death and resurrection that you and me could strob could strob with the firmly and courageously proclaim his name declare his name and authority and he says that as moses was faithful in god's house jesus had been found worthy of great honor than the moses amen and what does the one peter say let's turn to one peter one peter chapter the the very one and two verse one and two the bible says peter an apostle of jesus christ to god's elect strangers in the world scattered throughout the pontus galatia cappadocia asia and the bithynia who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of god the father through the sanctifying work of the spirit for obedience to jesus christ and sprinkling of his blood grace and be peace be yours in abundance and here it says that that's what the foreknowledge of god god knew god have a knowledge about you and me not now foreknowledge of god from the beginning and that's why elo says job saying that the one whose great knowledge is with you who's that it is the god almighty because he has the foreknowledge of god he has chosen he's appointed you and me not just like that he has appointed you and me with the foreknowledge of god <clears throat> before the world began many more scriptures you can add on but in all these things we have to be we are very to be very clear that god has a purpose in your life god has a purpose in my life we cannot a christian life or a life of a israelite is not a self selfish life or a self centered life but our life and a purpose is to fulfill what god has called us because as paul says that he has saved us and he has called us and he has appointed us he did not appointed by mistake he never makes a mistake of anyone he appoints and he calls us the holy brothers unto the holy calling we are appointed for a holy appointment that our life in this world will reflect the power of gospel the life in this world will reflect christ in us in our mind in our attitudes in our thoughts in our behaviors because colossians 1:20 says that by his blood on the cross of the calvary that all things in heaven and earth are reconciled to be reconciled and our purpose is in this world that we live is that we we'll, we we'll live according to the the heavenly standards that we have been appointed for his purpose 
we may be working in a organization we may be working in um, we may be working in many places we may be a manager you may be a pop any one you, you can do any business or you are working or you are self employed or you are looking at uh, you might be a boss of a company you might be anything but ultimately we are one purpose if you and me are in a position and that position as a purpose of divine our position as a divine purpose if the divine purpose is not there the position is null and void we have to give an account this is the word this is what the lord called israel out for why did god call abraham isaac and jacob and establish them and establish their generations and why did christ came to this world to shed his blood to save you and me that we have a purpose the position as the position that god is that you and me are seated our purpose what we have is a purpose we have a purpose and that purpose have to be fulfilled and god we are all of us are unique in our own ways we are not the same we are unique but we are joined together as in the body of christ as one body we are joined together probably as one israel we may be a, we have different capacities we have different uh, uh, understanding we have different talents all these things ultimately to put a natural it all brings at one purpose is that kingdom purpose i want to bring three people before uh, uh, you so that uh, we will know and understand the what is the purpose of the lord and with three people one is esther second is david and third is paul the apostle paul in esther chapter 2 when you read uh, esther was a was a girl who lost her father and mother and she was living with the maternal uncle or the uncle she had been brought up literally would say that she is an orphan she was an orphan nobody 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 mother died father died probably a deep uh, depression or probably uh, she would have had that sorrow in her oh my father is not there my mother is not there or should have considered the least even in an uncle's house but what happened god chose god chose esther to cut it short god chose esther god moved esther into palace there's so many women around so many girls were lined up in the palace for a selection to be a, the queen and i tell you and the bible says very clearly that nobody was found worthy except esther it is not because of her beauty it is not because of who she was but there was a purpose of god what is the purpose of god the purpose of god is a coming up the purpose of god is that haman haman what he did he made the king to give a declaration to 127 countries it begins from india to kush 127 countries to kill all the jews to kill all the jews and so here there was a crisis the jews were under the crisis the jews were under the crisis that any time they might be put to death and who are the jews jews are the children of the abraham isaac and jacob they are the covenanted people of god who is haman haman has no covenant with the lord and when haman brings in that and he got that sealed also and here molda uh, esther's uncle mordecai was in the palace he also moved out of the palace he was in the sackcloth and praying and here the lord 
shows every favor to Esther. Every favor to Esther. She was the least. Probably many would not know who this Esther was. Within the Jewish family. But to bring justice. As it said in uh, uh, Job 36. The law, the wicked will perish. And every right for the righteous will be given. That is the knowledge of God. And so if the wicked have to perish, God have to use his own for his purpose to bring the change. And so he moved Vasti out and he brought Esther in among all the girls, among every one of them, Esther found the favor of God and the favor of the king and the officials. From nowhere, she became the queen, not only for one country, one, 27 nations. And then what, did, what happened? We all knew when it, come, when it comes to Esther chapter 4, now Esther is positioned as a queen. Now she has a power to influence the king, but she didn't want she does not want to misuse the power, but instead she goes into the presence of God. She gets into the presence of God for the strength and the courage from the Lord. Chapter 4, it says in Esther chapter 4, it says that when, uh, can you just go to Esther, Esther chapter 4? Fourteen, it says, For if you sir, remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will rise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night and day. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. If I perish, I perish. What a verse. Who knows for such a time as this as God has appointed you for this. My brothers and sisters, if God had not raised Esther the time and Esther says, go and tell my uncle, gather the Jews and pray. Gather the Jews and pray for me that I will have the strength and the courage to face the king. And if I perish, I will perish. The purpose of God. The purpose of God. And we know, and as you read the book of Esther, go down to read the book of Esther, and you, you read the last, the ninth chapter, the ninth chapter and the tenth chapter of Esther, Esther prayed three days with all the maids. She sought the face of the Lord. And as Mordecai and the people of Jews, why did she have to do that? She should have said, no, it's okay. I have been, I have come to the position. Now I want to enjoy my life as a queen. Don't disturb me. No. The life of the Jews Cannot is not to be a self-centered or selfish. The life of Christian is not a self-centered and a selfish life. We are called the divine purpose. The divine purpose that as Esther prayed and sought the face of God and then she approached the king and the king, she found favor in the eyes of the king and got everything reversed. 
and that day the day that the judgment was given and the wicked lost the life the wicked perished the gallows you know the height of the gallows the gallows depth was 75 feet it is not only the person will be hanged but if after the hanging when they drop it all his bones and everything will crush such a horrible gallows that he built he had that vengeance against the jews that he want them to be killed somehow and he want not only in the susa but he want the entire kingdom of susa that 127 countries wicked perished and the lord lifted the righteous how through one person called esther because god appointed her to fulfill this purpose god has appointed you as his child god has appointed your family as his children god has appointed you not only to live for yourself but live for the purpose that god has for you and chapter 9 we see that that day that celebration that day they called as a purim a purim even today even today israelites celebrate remember purim they remember purim they celebrate for for couple of days or seven days they celebrate this festival called purim what god had done through esther and mordecai to save the lives of the jews but today it is reality you and me don't know when god use use you and me for his purpose mind you that our account what what we do it is recorded in heaven what what we do it is recorded in heaven and god it is we and god does not look at a short term but he looks at a long term so whatever the purpose that he does through you and me will last forever will last forever that is the kind of impact that god wants to impact the purim festival even today they celebrate the purim festival the second person that i want to bring to you is david when you look at david once one funds one samuel chapter 16 was 7 7 to let's turn to one samuel one samuel chapter 6 16 when they arrived samuel saw eliab and thought surely lord's anointed stands here before the lord but the lord said to samuel do not consider his appearance or his height for i have rejected him do not consider his height or his appearance because god does not consider about the height or the appearance the lord does not look at all the things man looks at man looks at outward appearance but lord looks at the heart and as i go down jesse had seven of his sons passed to mind jesse had seven of his sons passed before samuel but samuel said to him the lord has not appointed all these so he asked jesse are these the sons you have there is still the youngest jesse answered but he is tending the sheep samuel said send for him we will not sit until he arrives then he sent him and brought him a ruddy brought him in he was ruddy with a fine appearance and a handsome features then the lord said rise and anoint him he is the one so samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers and from that day the spirit of the lord came upon david in power samuel then went to rama hallelujah now with the scriptures when you see Jesse had all the seven children what and all of them were rejected they were good in appearance height and all these things but God chose the one which was ruddy and 
he was uh, he was tending the sheep so his smell would be with the sheep smell many would not uh, uh, even uh, would like to smell the kind of the deep shed the sheep tending smell huh? and this he was very handsome and the lord says this is the person the least the man sight is imperfect but to god sight is perfect to man sight is the least because he is he is capable of only tending the sheep he has no other knowledge but in god sight he does god does not look at what the man looks at the knowledge but divine knowledge that is imparted to him in him will stand firm and forever and the samuel took the anointing of oil and poured upon him and if you go down immediately verse 14 the bible says now the spirit of the lord came upon david and with the power and then the lord begin to work in david's life in second kings chapter 15 4 the bible says the lord tells abijah through the prophet saying that he wants to keep the lamp of david burning david finished his work and he moved out he finished his work the purpose of god in david's life was fulfilled when you read psalm 57 and the bible says that david says when he had been surrounded by the enemies and the bible says that david says lord have mercy on me for in you i take refuge and hide me in the shadow of your wings till all this disasters pass by till all the disasters pass by lord hide me in your wings have mercy on me lord for i am called for your purpose i am called for your purpose so when you and me know that god has a purpose for you and me and be of a sure that david said lord hide me in the shadow of your wings till all this disasters pass by whatever is surrounding us whatever is happening now or the future or in the past david says in psalm 18 i love you lord for you are my strength you are my shield you are my stronghold you are my refuge you are my tower you are my uh, the uh, uh, horn of salvation you are my shield i take refuge i love you lord because god's purpose was there in david god fulfilled the purpose of david because god david was a god's man's own god's heart david was a man of god's own heart he did sin but he repented and reconciled with god he was not rebellious he was not stiff necked he was not prostituting himself he did not utterly corrupt himself but in everything in all situation he was a man just like you and me who has failed in many times but he came back to god crying out to him submitting him surrendering him repenting and that by which he received the righteousness of god and that is how he became a, god, a man of god's own heart and god said I will keep the lamp of David burning through all generation. In Second Chronicles thirteen, verse six, he talks about the the covenant of salt he had with David. The covenant of salt, God salt covenant will never lose its taste because it is perfect. it will never lose its taste it will never lose its value it will never lose its effect it will never lose its power it will never lose its word because he is perfect in psalm 138 again david tells in what let's go to psalm 138 few scriptures and then we'll go on because we have so psalm 138 David's songs 
And David says, though the Lord is on high, he looks down, up, he looks upon lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand you save me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. David knew there is a purpose that God has established him as a king. And so he says, Lord, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. And for you, O Lord, and your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. And when you read the first chronicle, the end of the chapter, it talks about David spent, he was rested with his fathers peacefully, peacefully. Hallelujah. He, his last days was so peaceful. He enjoyed the palace. He enjoyed the presence of God. He enjoyed the provision of God. He enjoyed the goodness of God. It is the same God that you and me worship. There is no different God. Amen. And when now you see about Paul, Philippians 3, 10 to 14, the Bible says, let's turn to Philippians 3, what Paul, Paul, we know Paul, Paul talks about his past saying that I was a man like this, I was, he was a man of authority, the Paul was very arrogant, he was a man, he was a man of authority, he persecuted the church, he was circumcised, he was everything was perfect, he was a, he was a, he was like a Pharisee, and not only that, he is a, uh, he, he persecuted the church, he was legalistic in righteousness, faultless, and all those things, he did everything right according to the law that is given to him, and he was perfect, he was intelligent, he knew the law, he knew everything, he knew the Roman law, he knew the Jewish law, everything he knew. And he was, he was, you know, he is a, he is a, he is a man of knowledge and understanding. But what the Lord says, when he had an encounter with Christ, Philippians 3, 10, 10 to 14, he sees that, he says that, I have lost all things. Whatever was my profit, I consider now loss for the sake of Christ. Whatever profit I, whatever profit was to me profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything as loss compared to surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost everything. I consider them rubbish that may I gain Christ and be found in Him. Hallelujah. What a great blessing. He said, whatever I've, I've, I've earned, I consider everything lost. What all those profited me in my all these days, I considered it lost because there is something which is surpassing than that. There is something which is greater than that. There is something which is unimaginable than that. There's something which is phenomenal. There's something which is eternal that is only in Christ. He says that I consider them nothing that I may gain Christ and be found in him. And then he begins his purpose. He says for that, for that he says, now that I have already obtained all this thing, not that I have already obtained all, or I have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me, that I will, Christ took hold of me, it is not that I have taken hold of Christ, which means that Christ has appointed me. I have taken hold of Christ because Christ had a purpose for me. The talents that I received in the past, the talents and the knowledge and the understanding that I have, that have to be used for His kingdom purpose because that is the eternal benefit that we receive. To that eternal benefit, He says, is that 
I forget the past. I leave behind all my past experiences, all my profits, and I'll go forward. I'll strain and go forward to which I've been called for and win the price which God has appointed me heavenward in Christ Jesus. <coughs> God has appointed me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Just remember, Paul was such a man of authority, a man of power, a man of position, a man of everything. But uh, he says that there's something surpassing than what he knew and what he had was to gain to know Christ and be found in him and be found in him. And so he says, I consider all my past as rubbish, but now I have a goal and I'll press on to that goal which God has appointed me. And for that purpose, I will keep running, I will keep running, I will keep running for the purpose that he has called me and I will win that goal. I will win and I will receive my reward. You and me have a purpose. We might be of as I said, we might be of this world, we may be doing business, we may be in, a, uh, in authority, in what are the positions and authorities that you and me have. But there is something which is eternal pleasure, there is something which is surpassing than what you and me are holding. That is, we are being found in Christ and be appointed for His purpose, that we have to go on running, we have to keep running for His purpose. And that which gives us Eternal satisfaction. And so he says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6, I am already poured out like a drink offering and the time has come for my departure. Now he knows his departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on the day. And not only to me, but also to all who longed for his appearance. My dear brothers and sisters, we have a purpose. We may be anywhere, we may be doing anything, we may be uh, whatever our position and situations, all these things, all these things are nothing when compared to the eternal benefit purpose that God has for you and me. And Paul says, Paul is confident saying that I am ready to receive the crown of righteousness. And he says, not only me, it is also but to all those who longed for his appearance. So when Christ appears, if today Christ appears to you and to me, what is that we can give? What is that we have? We cannot give our wealth. He doesn't need our wealth. We cannot give uh, anything. We cannot count anything. But we have only one thing. That how about his purpose is fulfilled in our life. He cares for us. He takes care of us and all these things are there. And last, but I just want to close with this. Psalms 92 from 12 to 14. I want to just read this for you and pray with you. Psalms 92. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like the cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no wickedness in him. Hallelujah. In all these things he says, the righteous will flourish like the palm tree. Who is the righteous? The one who commits himself or herself to the purpose of God. What we have is for the purpose of God. What we have earned is for the purpose of God. And what all that is concerned in our life, it is for the purpose of God. And this purpose of God, when it is effectively used primarily for the divine purpose, it says that the righteous, you and me, will flourish like a palm tree. And we will be like the tree planted in the house of God always flourishing and even at the ripe old age, God willing, we will bear fruit. 
and we will stay fresh and green. We will age will not be a factor. We will always be fresh. We will always be green, not according to the worldly standard, but according to the standard of the Lord. And then it says that we will declare that the Lord is upright and there is no wickedness in him. Coming back to Job 36. God knows every man and the knowledge is with him. And justice will prevail in his house with his people. And judgment belongs to him. And his purpose will be fulfilled in every one of our lives. For those who have been appointed. You and me have been appointed. That's what Jesus says. That I have, you did not choose me. That I have chosen you. I have appointed you to bear fruit. And that fruit will last forever. That fruit will last forever. Amen. And as it says in Psalms 92, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. Planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of our God. We will flourish for those who, when we accepted this purpose, like Esther, like David, like Paul. See the history of Paul. God used, God gave him the knowledge. But when he, he turned his objective, he turned everything. And when he saw that Christ is found in him in Christ, the mystery of the knowledge of God that is greater surpassing than what he had before. And God used him mightily. And the purpose of God was fulfilled. And confidently he could say that I am living now and my crown of righteousness is waiting for me. And I wish that this is true. This is true, true to all those who believe and long for his appearance. Either at this age or even the age to come, when we end our days, according to the scriptures, we will flourish in the house of God to eternity. Till the last stage, we will bear fruit. We will stay fresh and green, which means that the anointing in us will never go dry. Anointing in us will never go dry. And we will see the uprightness of God. We will see our God is a judge, just God. Shall we bow and pray and come in, Father, we thank you and we praise you, God. Committing everyone into their precious holy hands. You are a God and you are a Lord. May your purpose be fulfilled in every one of their lives, that they lack nothing, O Lord. They will stay afresh, they will be fruitful, they will bear much fruit, O God, and they will stay afresh and green, and they will know and understand and have the knowledge of God that the Lord is upright, and there is no wickedness in him, but every wicked will perish and the righteous will have the rights from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. May God bless you for you are a chosen one. May God bless you for you are appointed for this purpose. May God bless you to bear that you will bear fruit all the days of your life. For God is exalted in above the heavens and his glory be on all the earth. May his purpose be fulfilled. He will protect you. He will shield you. He will guide you. He will guard you. Not only this age, but ages to come. And the light that is burned, is lit in you, will burn till he comes through all your generations. As he was faithful to the house of David, he will be faithful to your house. As he was faithful to the house of Esther, he will be faithful to you. As he was faithful to Paul, and through him, the Timothy and many of his many of the spiritual children have come through. He is also faithful to you and me. And above all, he is faithful to his promises. This will never depart. And this will never fade away. Heaven and earth will pass away. But his word will never. May God bless you 
And may God make his face shine upon you. And may God keep you from all harm and danger. May God grant you all his favor to you. And may God, may, may the Lord God grant his peace to you. May the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit rest from and abide with you, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 God bless you richly.